My name is Chief, and it's no surprise with a name like Chief, I can be a bit of a wise ass. <laughs> and I'm a self-confessed wise ass indeed. In Kiswahili, a wise ass is, uh, we call them Mjuaji. And the reason why I embrace the, the name Mjuaji is because it, it directly translates to being a knower, somebody who's overly curious. And it always struck me as bizarre that we vilified people who are knowers, people who are curious. And if you look at a lot of the folklore, a lot of the fables that we are fed as children, Growing up, especially in the Swahili language, I'm sure you're all familiar with the one, Asieski Alamku, Kubunjika Gu, exact, thank you. Now, it struck me that uh, I can't feed you statistics and uh, anecdotes because I'm not an academic, but as an artist, it is my job to keep my ear out for the spirit of the times, for the zeitgeist. And what I noticed was a lot of this folklore was established in the agrarian age of our time when things didn't change very much uh, and the custodians of the most knowledge were invariably older people and it made sense to be a conformist in such a setting. Now, in the present age when we have unprecedented youth unemployment, when we have technological change that has never been seen before, climate change and all these things that our parents have no better clue about what the future looks like than we do. So conforming is the most stupid thing you can do in such a fast changing environment. Now. I, I, first, I first came to the realization of how important it is to be a nonconformist in 2008. I always was, but it really came home. And a lot of people, a lot of analysts diagnosed what we went through in a myriad of different uh, ways. There were people like, uh, if you listen to Star Wars poem, they looked at the tribal angle. If you look at other people, they looked at the political angle, land issues and whatever. But the one thing that wasn't given a, about as much attention as I thought it should have been was conformity. And I was reading the book of uh, uh, Philip uh, Zimbardo, is it, who, the, the Lucifer Effect, which explores how even decent people can behave in appalling ways if put under sufficient stress. And now imagine how much worse people would behave if they are already exist in a culture which enforces uh, conformity. So I felt I needed to do something about it, and I thought that I would use the comic book format. And what I did was go back in time and decide to write about our history. And I decided to write about the emergency period, which had very uncomfortable parallels with what we went through in 2007. And doing this meant an incredible investment of my time, an incredible uh, sacrifice. I had to turn my back on a legal career. You can imagine how thrilled my father was at that. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew nothing about creating comic books. I knew nothing about what is involved. But I knew I wanted to do something irreverent. I didn't want. To, to have my voice cluttered by any third party. I did not accept any assistance from NGOs or, or third parties who would have not let my voice be pure. Unfortunately, I learned that there's a price to purity. I ran out of money after four issues. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to park the progress of my comic, but it gave me a valuable insight into what it takes to do something in a professional manner. So I teamed up with a great writer who is a great friend, Nahabi Wandera, and we syndicated a comic with a local daily and now we, we decided to tackle a more contemporary subject that a lot of more people could relate to and that wasn't confined to that uh, space in time. And the story we came up with was Roba. And Roba is, uh, among other things, a very agile fellow, as you can see. He jumps and leaps off things, rides motorcycles and whatever. But his greatest power is not all his physical prowess. It's his ability to think critically. It's his, it's his great talent with... Um, discerning. He's, he's kind of like a Sherlock Holmes from the street, you know what I mean? So I, I strongly believe that this is the sort of role model we need. If we are going to have a continent full of young Richards, like what you saw today, people coming up with uh, innovative solutions to, to help the continent innovate its way out of poverty, we as artists have a very critical role to play in fostering a culture of not taking things for granted, not taking things uh, without evidence, and challenging convention. And we must follow in the tradition of people like Fela Kuti if we are going to earn the right to be mentioned in the same breath as them. And I'd like to leave you with a quote from one of my favorite contrarians, who is uh, the late Christopher Hitchens, and it goes thus. I, I wouldn't risk quoting it verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> the high ambition, therefore, seems to be this, that one should strive to combine the maximum of impatience with the maximum of skepticism, the maximum of hatred of injustice and irrationality with a maximum of self-criticism. This would mean really deciding to learn from history rather than merely invoking or sloganizing it. You'll have to say it's beautifully phrased, and this is a beautiful encapsulation of everything that I stand for. Thank you.